So as I mentioned in the beginning, um, in the introduction, when we're dealing with maps, pretty much every single time we're going to have a preset x-axis and y-axis. We're going to have latitude and longitude um, mapped onto those two main axes. Um, where we get to visualize space um, or geography is with the different geoms that we put on those maps. Um, so we're, we're limited to, to x and y, um, but we can do all sorts of things on top of that x and y, and we can fill by things, and we can size by things, and we can color by things, and we can throw on different geoms. Um, so let's look at some examples. Um, you could have maps with lines and arrows that are filled by different things. And so this is from the Census Bureau. It shows migration between California and away from California, or to California and away from California um, from the 1950s to 2000. So you can see that most people um, went to California in kind of late 50s, early 60s, and then people leaving California didn't really make it that far away after that. Um, if you look, most people went from um, most people went from California to like Arizona or Colorado or went north, um, but they didn't end up going back um, to where they came from. And so you can visualize that with these lines here and with the arrows. And so that's one way of mapping a specific geom on there. Um, there's this really pretty map. Um, it comes from a website. If you click on that link down at the bottom or in the presenter notes, if you press P. Um, this is a live map of all of the wind patterns in the United States right now. And so you can see um, which direction the wind is blowing, how strong it's blowing. Um, this is actually a screenshot from Hurricane Sandy um, in October 2012. So here you can actually see like wind speed was huge. Um, you can see the spiral pattern of the hurricane here, but then the rest of the country was relatively unaffected by the wind. Um, but you can, you can see like live wind right now and it's really cool. Um, other things you can do with lines, this right here is an extremely detailed map that Kieran Healy made. Um, if you look at the presenter notes here, there's a link to it. Um, this is just the scaled down version. This is every single stream and river and lake and pond and anything that is water-based in the entire United States in one giant map shown um, with color. And so everything is colored by whether it's water or not. Um, this data all comes from the U.S. Geological Survey, the USGS. Um, they make it all available for free. You can make this exact map if you want to. It takes a while to render because like, that's a lot of water. Um, this is a low detail, but if you go to his website, he has a zoomed in version, I think in North Carolina, of like you can see tiny ponds and streams and stuff um, when you zoom in really carefully. And so that's like way cool. And you can do this with R. He did it with R. Um, so you can show lines, you can show colors, you can show points in kind of different um, methods. So if you look at this fun map, um, this shows every hurricane that has occurred since, 19, since 1851. And if you look carefully, the map is actually rotated funny. Um, this is South America right here. Antarctica is right in the middle. So it's looking from the South Pole up. And the reason they do that is because hurricanes and tropical storms and typhoons generally follow a spiral pattern around the world um, where they start kind of over here in Africa and they make their way over to the Gulf of Mexico. Um, there are some that come over here from the Pacific. Most of them are coming from um, North Africa over to the Gulf of Mexico and the, and the West Coast of the United States. And so you can see they're colored by category. So the category five storms are this, this bright green. The category one storms are little tiny uh, blue dots. And they've got other um, graphs that they've overlaid here showing the, the different strength of different hurricane seasons and the increase in hurricanes over time. So you can see like um, in the past 30 years or so, the late 1970s, we've greatly increased the number of annual hurricanes. Um, so it's got a whole bunch of information overlaid on here, but it's really just a map with geom point on it um, and then they use like scale fill viridis basically um, to, to color or scale color viridis to show the different point colors. Um, so it's standard ggplot language, standard grammar of graphics language, but with dots on a map. Um, this is another example from the New York Times. They have an interactive visualization of measles vaccinations throughout um, California. Um, the link again is in the presenter view for this, also down at the bottom here. Um, and so this is just with geom point on top of a map um, and they're colored by um, vaccination rates. And the, the more red you have, the lower the rates are, the more blue it is, the higher the rates are. 
Um, and they have this interactive, so you can actually click on different buttons and change the coloring scale and change what is actually getting visualized. But again, this is just points on a map. Um, this fun example, I really like this. This is, um, this is a map of Washington, D.C., and all of the pictures that were taken in Washington, D.C., I think it was in like 2008 or 2009, back when Flickr was a big famous website and everybody was posting stuff there. Um, when people posted things, the GPS location and metadata would be included in pictures very often. And so it was possible to go through Flickr photos and figure out where each of the pictures was taken. And then this person used an algorithm to figure out if that person was a tourist um, like if they lived in New York and then they were visiting DC because they had profile information for the people taking pictures, um, or if they were a local, if they were from Northern Virginia, then he counted it as a local. And he found really interesting patterns in where people were taking pictures in DC. So the red dots here represent tourist pictures and the blue dots represent the local pictures. And it's really fascinating here because if you look at the red dots, if you've ever been to Washington DC, you can probably guess that this whole red strip here is the National Mall. You have the Lincoln Memorial down here, you have the Washington Memorial in the middle, you have the Supreme Court and uh, the US Capitol up here. Um, right here is the White House. Right here is the Jefferson Memorial. Um, over here is Arlington National Cemetery. So all of these red places are kind of the most famous spots in DC. These two red areas up here, this is the National Zoo, and this is the National Cathedral. And so you can see where tourists go. And then you can see where all of the locals go. And they're not really at the mall taking pictures all the time. They're just kind of in these residential areas doing residential things, taking pictures of their food, not taking pictures of the Lincoln Memorial. Um, and that's like, it's a really cool story that you can tell here um, with just points. And they essentially used like Geon Point colored by tourist status. They didn't use ggplot for this, but the same grammar of graphics principle applies. Um, which is cool. Um, some other things you can do is you can fill, instead of filling by shapes, um, like actual state shapes, um, you can change the shapes of the units that you're trying to, to plot. Um, an example of that is this idea called Voronoi maps, which instead of showing actual state boundaries, what Voronoi maps do is they plot the distance, or they make shaded areas of the distance to the closest whatever point you care about. So right here, these are all the main state capitals. Um, and so instead of having state boundaries, what essentially happens is it looks at every single point in the United States and figures out which capital is the closest. So here in Washington, right here, the closest capital is Seattle. And so it's colored as Seattle. Once you get here to Eastern Washington though, the closest capital becomes um, whatever capital this is right here. I think that's Idaho's. Um, and so suddenly, if you're over in far eastern Washington, in this, it says you're closer to um, fake Idaho here. Um, this is really interesting when you get to like Georgia here. Here's Atlanta. Um, but there are parts of Georgia where it is closer to Tallahassee than it is to Atlanta. And so this is kind of like fake Atlanta. This is everywhere that's as close to Atlanta as you can get without going to other capitals. Um, and so it's like Texas gets split in half here because you have um, Oklahoma's capital here and then Texas's capital. So North Texas is technically closer to Oklahoma than it is to Texas. And so that's kind of like a neat hypothetical way of looking at um, a map. But again, these are like fake maps. It's just a good example of Vor this Voronoi idea. Where this is useful though is this map here. What this shows, it's the same Vor Voronoi concept. But this is essentially saying, find every point in the United States and figure out its closest um, NBA team and where it is based. And then in theory, those people should be most interested in following that specific team. So if you look here, you have like the, the Kings and the Warriors. Um, the Warriors just have this very small triangle here because lots of people are closer to the Sacramento Kings than they are to the Golden State Warriors here. Or the Clippers and the Lakers down here um, if you live in like just outside of Las Vegas, you're closer to Los Angeles than you are to Phoenix for the Phoenix Suns. So in theory, Utah Jazz, they should go all the way up to like Southern Alberta here um, because that's the closest to Salt Lake City. And so people actually use this in real life to try to segment the market. 
and see how well this maps on. Like in theory, the jazz's biggest audience shouldn't be like over over in Nevada, Northern California. That's going to be more of Sacramento's land because they're closer to Sacramento. But this proves that they might have opportunities to reach into Montana because people in Montana are much closer to Salt Lake City than they are to Seattle. Um, and so you know, it, it divides up the whole world that way, um, which is really cool. And then you can see other places like the New York Knicks. They just have this, this small place here versus the Nets, which just has like the coast of New York City. And the 76ers just has this really small sliver because the Wizards take over lots of stuff. And so like Cuba is a huge fan of the heat and uh, because that's in Miami, but then Orlando is like they have their own um, market there. So you can see all sorts of like cool patterns in here. Um, if you search Google for Voronoi maps, you'll see a whole bunch of different examples of real life ones. Um, it's just kind of a, a fun way of looking at stuff. Um, another thing you can do with maps is instead of following the exact boundaries, you can shape different or you can size different states by different variables. Um, and here, everything is shaped as a square. This is kind of like the waffle plot idea that we've we talked about when we talked about amounts and proportions. Um, but this is a waffle plot that is laid out like a map. So we have Florida down here, Georgia, California, and the West Coast over here. But then each of these squares is sized by um, the number of insurance policies that people could renew before the 2013 change to the Affordable Care Act. Um, this is an interactive graph. Again, the link is in the presenter notes here from the New York Times. Um, and so this shows kind of the extent of which states allowed people to renew their private insurance before Obamacare took effect. Um, the actual story isn't as important here. What's, what's important here is like we can visualize geography um, without using like a real map, but using kind of shapes to build the map. Um, you've done something similar already if you use GeoFacet in any of your past assignments, um, where you take different facets and lay them out in the shape of a map. Um, and so you're still communicating geographic information, um, but without a real live map, we don't have latitude and longitude mapped on here. Our x-axis here is, uh, is year, so we're showing time, and then y-axis is unemployment rate, but it's still the shape of geography, and so it still works. So there's a whole bunch of different ways of looking at this. Again, there's no one right way to show maps. There's no one right way to show points on a map or lines on a map. It's just um, whichever is the clearest, most um, accessible way for people to understand your story, that's the best way to visualize it. So you'll get practice with that in your exercises today, and it should be fun.